You know. Yes. Let's see if you feel about like that after we're done. Um, they found a topic and they gave it to me. They said, just whatever you're uncomfortable with, give it to the Puerto Rican. He'll take care of it. Um, that's my job. I'm the Puerto Rican that just cleans up after everybody else. So I do forensics. I do governance. I take care of bad behaviors. Um, so why are a lot of people uncomfortable with this topic? Um, the, the conversation starts really, really nicely. You know, there is great postings. There is great research being done. And then the trolls come in. So there is there's really good things to be said. There is real numbers. There's all of these things out there. And then the conversation just very quickly degrades. So um, whenever you get into these conversations, don't read the comments. Don't listen to the comments. Just bypass this thing. Just focus on what is at hand. So yeah, questions? Oh, no, agree. Oh, OK. Good, then yeah, feel free to agree. And disagree, too, for that matter. Let's just not go too far into that. So definition, what are we going to talk about today? We're not going to talk about equality um, or liberation or justice or anything, any of those things. We need to get into a position to staff some of the uh, positions that we have open. And that's actually where we're going to go. Another thing that we're not going to talk about today is we're not going to talk about how this is so great and how having one of everything is, is the good thing. And because it, 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 it's not true. It's not true. Um, it, there is just no way that you're going to put a whole bunch of personalities, particularly InfoSec personalities, in one room and they're going to get along. So what is diversity? So when you look at me, um, a lot of people, I, I have had um, Iranians, Iraqis, uh, Venezuelans, so let's, let's come back to this continent, um, Venezuelans, every, every nationality of, of brown person, so to speak, claim me, right? It's like, you're one of ours. It's like, no, I'm a tiny little island. Um, a lot of people don't know that it's actually uh, a territory, one of the last colonies, if you actually want to get political. Um, and uh, it's a mess. It's a mess right now. But putting that aside, um, it's what we perceive with the five senses. Sometimes, you know, the person next to you is cooking really funky food. They're not from here. Um, and, you know, what, what do they look like? And that's how we tend to judge people. Okay, fair enough. But if you actually start looking underneath the surface and your presentation happens to just go away for some reason because you pressed the wrong button, you'll see that it's way more than that, right? The conversation nowadays is in the uh, gender, right? We're, we're discussing a lot of gender issues and um, bathroom conversations. It's, it's the big thing. Um, that is part of the conversation, right? But it's also where does a person come from, their politics, their, um, the way they think, their values, their beliefs is way more than just what they look like or what they eat or anything like that. This picture is floating around. Um, and it's, we have everything that we can see as the tip of the iceberg. And then the depth of the person is actually way underneath that. Um, there's a stereotype that I'm still trying to look for it. There is a, there is a li little Mexican guy with a big sombrero taking a siesta. I got to tell you, I've been to Mexico a few times. I have friends that are Mexican. I never seen a Mexican take a siesta. Now, their fiestas, though, their parties are wild. Um, but I never seen somebody take work so seriously down to religious status as I've seen a lot of immigrants. Um, they just, they come here to work, they work really hard, and it, again, it's like I'm still looking for that little sleepy town where I can actually take a rest, and I haven't found it. So where this conversation is going, where I want to take it, where the people that write these great postings want to take it, it's in a little bit more complex of a direction. This woman, does anybody know where she's from? Okay, Puerto Rican raised in New York, uh, Sonia Sotomayor. Even she's complaining about the fact that the courts in her home state um, are a little bit too uniform. All of the judges are familiar with white cr crime, and they're not really well-versed in the situations that they're going to be faced as judges. And what she's looking to do is to bring a diverse perspective um, into the cases that the courts are seeing. By the way, this conversation is going to be in, stop doing that. You have the same issue in 
Oh, did they? Okay, now the entertainment portion, I'm going to teach you how to dance salsa in the meantime. But, um, so, I'm, I, I talk kind of quickly, it's one of the traits that you don't particularly see uh, until you actually start talking to me and engaging me in things that I really like, like infosec and uh, politics, so long as, you know, we bring them into uh, the right, we keep them at the right level, and so, anyway. Let's see. So the issues, what do we have? Security. Security right now, it's kind of like diet and health. We're spending a ton of money. Um, we're getting successes. We move forward. We improve a lot. And then cake happens. Um, or in security, we get breached. So we get pulled in different directions. I, it's in the late 80s, early 90s, it was, oh, you're a hacker, you, you secure things, you break things. Can you prevent people from breaking in? Um, can you change my mortgage or my grades? It's like, well, yeah, but I don't want to go to jail. So in diets, uh, most, a lot of the diets fail. There, there's no commitment. In diversity, kind of the same thing happens. There is, yeah, we're going to create a diversity program. We have these great successes. Um, in InfoSec, kind of the same thing. We're actually going to secure all these things. We're going to implement a million dollars worth of new hardware, and then it fails. We're back to the drawing board. Well, how about we get a new risk management uh, framework? How about we get some new tools? Let's do some new scanning. Let's get a new perspective. And it, it just, it's kind of like we keep going up and down, up and down, and we don't get anywhere. So let's, let's just jump on a new fad. Let's see what happens. Then in the meantime, we're going along with a whole bunch of positions that are still open. So the conversation, it's, oops, the conversation um, needs to be about people, the liveware, layer eight, um, the, the problem that exists between the keyboard and the chair. It needs, to be it needs to be moved towards what can the human do to actually secure the enterprise. Um, and where do we get more of these humans? It's been about what the blue team needs to secure, to secure the, um, the flag from the red team. What can your employees do to um, defend them themselves from attackers? And again, there is no matter how many tools you put out there, no matter how much money you put out there, um, uh, tools, money, resources you throw out this problem, there's just not going to be enough. So... Eh, not bad. Um, I'm having a lot of problems doing presentations nowadays because it's I want to hit the most people and when I present um, the A-team as it should be, people think of, oh, Liam Neeson. No. This is the A-team. There is no other A-team. There is no more. There's no other. Um, so, as you can, these, the group, does anybody recognize the top picture? NASA specifically, which team? Apollo. Oh. Apollo 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, which, uh, the moon, 11. 11. Oh. Yes. Um, so one thing that these teams have in common is, A, they're diverse. There was a lot of issues in the 80s about um, objectification of women in the A team. But she was there, trust me. There was a woman that was mostly part of the team. Um, but these are the guys that, that were the face of, of that group. Then we get SNL, um, Saturday Night Live. One of the most uh, successful uh, runs that they had was with this team of crazy people. And there we have it again, ladies and gentlemen. So if this keeps going, we're going to switch to salsa lessons, OK? Um, which in the end may or may not be more productive, but definitely will be more fun. So, uh, what was that? Uh, go ahead. Um, so, question. Your team, at home, at work, whatever you work at, um, does it, do you have within your team all of these skills or somebody in your corporation that provides them? Who am I missing here? Something that you have in, in your work team. HR people. Okay. How do people work and feel, you know, what are their habits? Because they're typically the ones creating the problem. 
I was going to ask you, you're HR, but then you switched. Excellent. Who else? Who do you work with that is missing here? Product managers and the people who are communicating the business. business. Okay. Yeah. Customers. 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 Yeah. Oh. Uh. Not just customers, but also the people who do like customer care or customer support or technical response. Because often, like, if something is broken, customers will complain about it to like help people and making sure that information gets passed on to the people who do incident response is really important. Okay. In very large companies, this is these are broken down in you know it's us versus them and all of those things. But let me give you a lesson. A very quick lesson. Everybody know what SSL is? Good. Everybody, incident res any incident responders in the room, present or past? <laughs> and now our salsa intervention. SSL stands for swinging salsa lessons. Right? <laughs> I like it. See, diverse thinking right there. So, incident responders in the room, past, present, future, excellent. Imagine this. Usted recibe una llamada y le dicen que van a atacar su, su corporación. ¿Qué hace? No hablo. <laughs> no hablo. Exactly. So, with all of these people in the room, not a single one speaks Spanish. Okay? That for today, my friends, is not your swinging salsa lesson. It's your Spanish as a second language lesson, okay? So no matter how diverse you think you are, there's always, the attackers are gonna throw something at you that you may not be ready for. And what you think, and what you think you need it before the attack, it just gets thrown out the window. Um, somebody at, at uh, Source this week said, everybody has a plan until they actually get punched in the face. Mike Tyson. Yes, somebody used that at, at, uh, um, at source. And what ends up happening is, sure, you actually have all of these plans, you have all of these people, you have this awesome team, and then you get a curve. That, my friends, was a phone call from a hacktivist in South America that called a corporation, and all he cares about is the politics of the corporation, and he just said, I'm gonna attack your corporation, this is what I'm going to do. Go out, defend against it. Good luck. So if you actually had somebody that spoke Spanish and that actually looked this good, then you could actually just <laughs> couldn't say that with a straight face. Um, you would actually be in a better position to defend your corporation. And again, it may or may not happen that easily. But by the time you get the phone call, who knows what's going to happen? So what we have right now is we actually have a lot of external factors uh, controlling what we do as incident responders, um, even as product managers. Um, we have a lot of people that are getting hacked because of social engineering. Um, the counts of uh, phishing that, it's, that is coming in uh, for CEOs, um, it's just, it's incredibly high as to how successful they are. Last night, we were sitting at a table um, uh, discussing InfoSec and politics and what the, this election happens. One of the people at the table got an alert that somebody was trying to hack into his account. Relatively high level individual um, in a product corporation. And um, of course, he doesn't respond very well to authority. He doesn't respond very well to um, getting, uh, you know, click this to actually change your, you know, it, it just doesn't go. Then on the other side, you actually have a lot of people that are very angry as to what corporations and, and particularly in this country are doing, so you get hacktivism. And then the worst thing, $7,000, for example, to, just to pick a number, it's a lot of money in, in other countries. It's what some, what some families make together in a year. So for a, relatively amount, uh, for a relatively small amount of money, you have somebody that is gonna dedicate their life to trying to get into your corporation, to get your secrets out, or just to cause mayhem if they shorted your stock. So 
Um, HR. Uh, what do non-malicious insiders do? Quick, are you? How do you know? Oh, to to yeah, they just you click. Know, in this, in this yeah. Actors, what's the threat from a it's first of all right. If you actually if you're a hacktivist right, if you're actually trying to break into a corporation and you can't get through, what are you gonna do? Oh. If if you fall short technically, you go recruit someone that is already angry. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Non malicious, accidental. You know, I I opened up the uh, zip file and I got a shipping notification, I got a bill, and then you go ask them, were you expecting a bill? No, I never gotten one in my life. So why do you open that? Uh, they're just, you know, sometimes curious, well-meaning, they just want to do well by your corporation, and they just, they do silly things. Um, I'm the one giving this talk, by the way. My partner that is Romanian, um, he will tell you, they're stupid, um, and then they will leave it at that. <laughs> So now you know why I'm here instead of him. I'm going to tell you, the subject of insiders makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Because I remember Dan Barrett, 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 Barrett,
<laughs> so it's, it's, you know, great team, great team. But, you know, they actually have really predictable tactics, right? This is what we're going to do. We're going to move together as a unit. We're going to go left. We're going to go right. Everybody's going to be honor honorable. Um, and let's fight in line. And let's get this done. And then the attackers come in. And they throw everything they can at you, right? Old ladies, frozen dead people, um, giants, red-haired people. Actually, that was one of the one of the memes that was going around. Redheads had no soul. Um, but I'm glad that one is over. I happen to like redheads a lot. Um, and so they throw anything they can, they want, and then, then you're left with, you know, the Spanish phone call that you don't know what to do with. So the worst thing that happens is you get a phone call saying, I have a great opportunity for you, right? And it happens to be a resume that you posted about 10 years ago that somebody sucked out of a database and you're getting called to do tech support and you haven't done tech support in the last 15 years of your career. So yes, I am a senior recruiter. My name is John. I have a very thick accent from nowhere in this country. And um, I'm here to offer you something. And it's for your corporation. And there we have it. Um, <laughs> so you get this phone call. And then you get this, if you're actually the, the hiring manager, you get these great resumes from people that don't really want to talk to you. I was just talking to someone at Source, Mike Taylor, that said he got a resume from an individual that um, wanted to do Metasploit as part of their job. And Metasploit is a great product. And if you use it for pen testing or just to cover the bases, you know that it's pretty much a wizard. You just you can put it in a wizard mode and you walk through it. So this individual asked for a hundred and eighty thousand dollars salary to click through a security tool. And there was nothing else he knew how to do, by the way. So if you happen to be in this room, I want to hire you but I'm going to put you on my sales team, OK? Because if you got that kind of money for that level of job, I mean, hats off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, 180 <laughs> to run a wizard, <laughs> it's like the Clippy that Microsoft used to have in the corner. Hey, do you need help? Um, yeah. Call the Metasploit guy. He's Clippy. So. Um, we actually have, regardless how many bad resumes we get, what we have right now is we have a huge gap um, in resources, particularly in pe on the people side. We have great tools, um, awesome budgets. Um, City that got hacked last year was in the tens of millions just in security. Um, I don't know about any of you, uh, but if I had a $10 million budget for security, I wouldn't be here giving this talk. Um, I'll be in Mexico, sitting down, looking for that mystical village where all the Mexicans sit down and just take siestas the rest of the day. But depending on who you ask, right now, there's an awesome black screen that I was just going to point at. There's a million jobs out there um, just in InfoSec and that are open, that are unfilled. There's a million jobs open out there. According to this guy, by 2020, there's going to be a million and a half, right? However, the good old US government says there are, in 2014, there was 82,900 security professionals out there. And to make 90,000, you need a bachelor's degree and less than five years of experience, OK? These are the numbers that a lot of corporations use to pick your salaries, right? Um, good luck getting somebody with that level of experience here in Cambridge, for example, where they're just people just go across the street and they get a 30% salary increase. So um, by the way, there's two categories that if you actually do the search for information security that come up, you're either an information security analyst, any of those in the room? Ah, one. <laughs> yeah, so you are the person that they're counting here. None of these other good people. And then database administrators, they're, respons <laughs> they're responsible for setting permissions on databases um, and keeping users limited to the data. I think these are the guys that 
are skipping their jobs. SQL injection and all those things. Anyway, um, no hating on the database admins. So, however, they're saying that we're going to experience an 18%, a full 18% growth. And yes, um, so you start with the left. It's failing faster. <laughs> and then, yes, and then you step back. Yes, and then you step back with the right, and then you bring it to the middle. That's salsa. Okay? So if you want to look really, really good in a, um, in a cruise, anybody going on vacation on a cruise this, this summer? So it's just, see, I can move my hips too. Um, and that's it. That's your lesson for this intermission. We're going to go back to our scheduled presentation in three. So there's going to be a full 18% increase. If you actually, if you, if you do numbers, you know that if 20% of positions in your company are open or in your department, anybody have 10 people in their department? Security in 10? Don't be shy. Um, 20? More than 50 people? Oh, wow. One. You're the sole security person. Yes. Then that's only halfway down. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got a person and a half? Yeah. So you know that if you actually have 18% um, vacancies in your, in, your, um, in your department, you're in trouble. So the good old uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics is saying that we're actually going to have 14,000 positions open um, in the next eight years. So I decided to figure out where were the security people. And I just picked one of the... I mean, regardless of how you feel about certifications, this is not, the CISSP is not easy to get. It's a hassle. You need five years of experience, um, you need a boring test, and really thick books, um, it, unless you have the experience. But you can pass it. it. Within a year, you'll be ready to pass it from zero to certified. And there are 77,000, again, 82,000 jobs open, or filled with 14,000 positions that are going to be open by 2022? 24? 2024? There's 77,000 CISSPs. That's not counting the rest of the ISC Square certifications, uh, let alone GIAC or anything else. One of the biggest problems, and I work for a company to try to do this at one point. And what we were trying to do is actually have real job titles that can really distinguish. For instance, I've had at least eight job titles, and yet my job doesn't change. That not with that company. Mm -hmm. You know, you could call an information security officer, you could call a lead uh, principal security engineer, you could be called a principal security analyst, and it makes it very hard to compare these numbers. Mm -hmm. And the experience for each of those is very, very different. Indeed. And I've worked a lot with a certification area actually did try to do that and tie it to core competencies. What certifications, what experience, how do you move people up the ladder? We're only a large company can even attempt that. Oh, yeah. People are this when I see jobs posted. They're always in that same job descriptions as I want to see ISSP uh, of, of BS at least mm -hmm. five years of experience. I used to joke that once one two years of experience and a CISSP because they, they don't match. But it's almost like people copy it and they use it for every single job not realizing it's great diversity. Oh yeah, and, and all of the jobs that you mentioned happen to have some sort of security responsibility, which you would think will make it easy to search. But again, I try to account for that, looking for the, all the security jobs, there's two descriptions that actually include that, and there we have it. Um, and you also you have, you have the ISACA categories on there either, which are less right. you know, engineering type, but also involved with security and risk management. Correct, and GIAC, which are the hardcore, you know, CEH, and whether you like certification or not, I just use it as the guideline, um, just to figure out who self-identifies uh, versus what our government thinks, and it, it just, it, it was just ridiculous. And three, two, you had it, almost, and excellent! So, um, facts. Regardless how you feel about certifications as to what your team composition is, um, we're not expecting a problem. We have a problem. 
right? It's we're, we're lacking the, the human resources that we need to move some of their programs forward and to keep the corporations secure. Um, even at 18% that the government says we're actually going to have these vacancies, um, we're heading towards a chaos. We're going to have to start hiring people and, and bringing them along. And as good security professionals, we all know we can't solve the problem, but we can mitigate it. We can make things a little bit better. I'm about to switch into Puerto Rican mode because this dance with, uh, with the uh, computer has made us lose a lot of time. Um, so women, let's take women, for example, in IT, not security specific. That, that became very hard to find. 51% of the population, um, it's, it's uh, female. 59% is actually make up the general labor force. However, once you start getting down into IT, you start seeing 30%, 35%, and lower. Um, once they actually, um, you know, good, good for the women, once they get hired, a lot of them gravitate toward, towards management. Um, depending on how you feel about this, it, it's a fact. Women communicate better. If not better, more. But the reality is um, they, they're, they're better communicators in general. Uh, that's not, so I've looked at some of the, the research and some of the numbers on sort of women in STEM, women in computing. The problem doesn't seem to be that women communicate better. The problem is starting in about fourth grade and continuing all the way up through sea level executive thing, women ditch technology and ditch computing faster than men. Mm -hmm. From middle school to high school, more women say, yeah, I'm going into liberal arts to hell with this than men. From high school to college, more women say to hell with this. And it's not because women are better communicators or women are nurturers or women are dumb. A lot of the evidence suggests if you ask women, why did you leave, why did you bail, uh, that it has to do with hostility and it has to do with attitudes mm -hmm. and culture. Yep. Women don't leave because they want to communicate, women leave because people are jerks and they're done with it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, I'm going to be around all day. Um, let's, let's start getting. Uh, start getting closer to uh, to the end because this is this is the uh, facts, right? These are the numbers that we need to bring back and present. This study came out this week um, from uh, how the Massachusetts tech ecosystem is creating new growth opportunities. From MassDLC, go check it out. Um, they their their main claim um, is that we have now surpassed uh, Silicon Valley as the place to work in technology. Again. Arguable, but hey, let's go, let's let's go with that. Um, what it does show is that uh, women are definitely underrepresented. They they have a claim of thirty by thirty five percent uh, in tech. In Massachusetts. In Massachusetts, yeah. Check the study. Um, whoever wants uh, this presentation, I'll give it to them. It, nothing here that is secret. So, diversity to me. If I was looking for a candidate today, I'm looking for an open mind. Somebody that is curious, self-driven, and that brings that and manifests that into innovation. Give me a new solution to an old problem. Um, it, you know, SIM by itself and aggregating logs is not solving our issue. We need to figure out how we're going to embrace um, this th this future that that where we're going to be um, underpowered and then outgunned in defending our enterprises. So the new talent world looks something like this. I wanted to actually interact a little bit more, but even Hollywood had this right. Angelina Jolie, does anybody know where her grandparents are from? They're Slovaks. So um, Hollywood had diversity, right? Right? Um, Mr. Robot? Yeah, well, hey, hey, hacker teams. These are hacker teams, OK? Um, these two guys, um, Mr. Robot, pretty cool show, whether you believe it or not, it's, it's fun. Um, he was at RSA this year. Uh, he, if you guys don't know where, who he is, he's from Egypt, right? Um, and the guy that got crushed in the elevator in Mission Impossible, uh, Mr. Estevez, does anybody know where he's from? Irish and Spanish. So. Again, in, in their pursuit of beauty, they have come up with these individuals that happen to be 
uh, relatively diverse. The two women on the top are not from Hollywood. They're actually real hackers. And I wish I could tell you more about them, but we're running out of time. So look around this room. You know, we're relatively diverse. But who's missing? Right? We need old guys, for one. I don't know. People with, I'm sorry, people with experience. No, you guys look too young. Way too young. Old, older. Unfortunately speaking, we very tight. Yeah. There's, there, we, we, we got a relative mix. So to me, age is experience. I know that once in technology, pretty much once you hit 30, you're unhirable. Um, once you hit um, your 40s, it's they want you out. If you're there by 55 and you know, and you don't get laid off. More power to you. Just an interesting and disturbing factoid. In Silicon Valley, a lot of plastic surgeons are seeing more and more young men who are gonna get, are getting surgery so that there we go. they continue to get hired. They're actually better shaving their hair on purpose to look cooler and younger, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. So, but also, okay, so the gray. Gray. what's that? So also maybe not to show the gray. Not to show any gray, yeah. not to show in, you know. Yeah. They should so get a government job. We have a yeah, geriatric board over it. Hey, um, so to me, age is it's akin to experience. Race and cu different cultures, they bring a different perspective. I was doing this presentation, and I dare say that women communicate better, so I just leave in the blanks. Um, my wife, that she definitely um, owned me when, uh, when I was doing this presentation. I decided to leave my perspective on what women bring to the job out of this. I'll let you fill in the blank. And um, different backgrounds in education mean different solutions. So I wanted to bring an exercise. Um, if you were building the perfect security person, um, what are the skills and what are the qualities that you would bring um, that, that you will want them to have? Um, to me, uh, certification is less important, but curiosity and passion are, are definitely critical. Um, I don't, I'm not advocating that you go out to the, to the HR supermarket and you get yourself one of everything. Um, get yourself capable people that exhibit these traits, and if you can, try to bring in different perspectives. When two candidates are equal and one of them can actually bring a different perspective, think about that when you're building your team. Um, when does the next presenter start? Okay, so I'm going to steal, uh, steal you for a couple more minutes because I'm going to ask you for your help. Veracode and NYSC did a survey of corporate board members and what they were looking for from their security leaders and their experiences in security. And one of the things that stood out to me was in terms of the things that were important to them and their security leaders, okay, one was technical acumen, two was business acumen, three was communication. So there we have it. Um, so what can you do? Mentor people, sponsor more people, um, go out and recruit. If you actually look at your company's HR materials and you wouldn't go to work there today, just have a talk with them. Show them the cool projects that you're working on. Um, every time I start speaking security to somebody that is um, an, an outsider, a, a normal, as somebody called them this week, um, they get really, really excited. What we do is pretty cool. And there's so many things that we can do here. Um, code, debugging the gender gap. I'm trying to put together a, um, a screening of this movie to keep the conversation going. This was the one change that I made to my presentation today. This showed up. Check it out, codedocumentary.com. Um, if, if you can actually, uh, if you have some extra energy and want to contribute to this, let's, let's see if we can bring this to Boston. Well, I want to see if, because I, I can't do it by myself. I have a day job, too. Um, I don't know yet. But see, this is what I need. Other, other offers, other ideas. So um, what's happening out there? Uh, let's see. These two guys, they're doing security and, and promoting the curriculum in, the, in, in, in bars for free. So... This happened last year. <laughs> Talk to these people about talking uh, about bringing better curriculums to the schools. Yeah. Ming Chao, Roy, thank you. I'm a little bit concerned 
Oh no, that's that's what's happening. That's what's happening. Corporations, for example, um, NASA sits in in the um, University of Puerto Rico in Mayagüez, and they just take all the engineers out of Puerto Rico. Uh, uh, and, and they do the same thing with pharmacy, not NASA, but CVS, Walgreens, and all of that. They go to Puerto Rico, recruit them. These people are bilingual. They like diversity. And one of the things I will comment on. Um, I volunteer at a collegiate cybersecurity competition every year, and we have to go before the college level and start educating people, yes. even in grade school and middle school mm -hmm. and high school, because even to today, I was at the competition in March, and the students are still, their education in college at uh, bachelor's and master's level is still focusing on network and perimeter. Stop. They're not hearing about application security. Yeah, you're about to get these two started. Um, <laughs> so, um, women in cybersecurity, NICS, um, there is a free environment where, where veterans can actually test their cybersecurity skills. Um, there is grants, there's a whole bunch of things out there. Get the people you know together. Let me, I, I really want to get some people out of here. Um, in Boston, this is what the population looked like, this is what your security team will look like, and remember, 51% female. If you don't have this, this is an idea, but... Um, let's see, what does, again, what does it mean, what should it mean to you? Be aware of your gaps, look for passion, not certifications, and look for aptitude, not necessarily technical skills. And, yes. <laughs> That's on purpose. So whoever wants to stay and talk, let me know. Excellent. So, um, there's actually a national dialogue um, going on to try to figure out how to solve it at the education level, K through 12 and higher ed. Pun intended. That's nice. speakers is open right now. So. There's also a relatively new organization called the International Consortium of Minority Cybersecurity Professionals. They had their first kickoff conference a couple months ago, ICMCP. Excellent. Um, can you email me? Yeah. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. <laughs>